Hello and welcome to this level 3 by passing context training video for Pearson at Excel. In this video we're looking at solving equations. So for specification, students need to be able to solve linear equations in one unknown with the unknown on both sides of the equation and on one side of the equation. They must also be able to solve simplified equations with two variables. There are no relevant formulae in the form book for this particular topic. Here's mapping documents to GCC and GCE. Students should be doing lots of solving equations at GCSE. And again, it continues at GCC as well. So look at some ideas how we can teach this topic. So students can look at the costs of buying multiples of two items. You can introduce some objects with unknown prices, but given the cost of combinations of those objects and challenge students to work out what one of each item costs. They can also look at some everyday equations such as converting temperatures or energy bills. So the key skills needed for this topic, students need to be able to solve equations with one unknown on either one side or both sides of the equal sign. These equations may involve fractions and brackets. Students also need to be able to solve simplified equations where both equations are linear and have two variables. They must also be able to form these equations from worded information. So here's an exam question from 2016, paper two, question three. For this question, students need to refer to a data source from the source booklet. Julie's going to spend around £70,000 on a new car. She needs to decide whether she's going to buy a petrol car or a diesel car. She estimates she's going to drive approximately 10,000 miles each year. The yearly cost is the total of the standing charges and the running costs. Students need to calculate the yearly cost for each type of car. Part B, how many miles would Julie need to drive before the yearly cost of the diesel car will be less than the yearly cost of the petrol car? So first of all, we've got to make sure they can find the information from the source booklet. So we've got the standing charges, we've got the running costs for each type of car. So the petrol, We've got 3,011 plus 10,000 lots of 0 0.2114, gives us a cost of 5,125. Similar calculation for diesel gives us a cost of 5,236. So for part B, we've got to work out the number of miles so that the cost of the diesel car is less than the cost of the petrol car. So here we can either form an equation or inequality Let's let M be the number of miles driven. Using the same values from last time, we've got 3,011 plus M lots of 0 0.2114. For petrol and for diesel, we've got 3,411 plus M lots of 0 0.1825. We need the diesel to be less than the petrol, so we can use an inequality here. We've got an unknown on both sides. So we can subtract 0 0.1825 M from both sides. Then divide both sides by 0 0.0289, which means the M must be greater than 13,840.83 miles. So here's the mark scheme and exam report. You can see that students were usually able to select the correct information, but sometimes including the price of the car in their calculations. Some are also not able to convert the running cost from pence to pounds. For part B, very few students use the algebraic approach, some just did with trial improvement. This didn't lead to successful attempts. So here we go, another exam question. This is from 2017. Question four, let's look at part B. A farmer has two types of field, low fields and valley fields, and he grows pumpkins on these fields. The yield in tons per acre in each type of field depends on the weather. The table gives the yield for wet weather and dry weather. The farmer considers growing half the pumpkins in the low fields and half the pumpkins in the valley fields. Let X be the fraction of pumpkins grown in the low fields and Y be the fraction of pumpkins growing in the valley fields. Part B1 is to explain why X plus Y equals one. Then we have the farmer needs to ensure a total yield of 24 tonnes per acre in the wet weather conditions. So we need to use that information to write down another equation in X and Y and then hence find what X and Y are going to be. So here are the answers. So first of all, if X and Y stand for the fraction of pumpkins growing in the valley fields and the low fields, 
Well, those two fractions must add up to a one. Part two, let's just look at the wet weather values here. So again, we've got 31 lots of the fraction X plus six lots of the fraction Y must equal 24. So now we have two equations with two unknowns. So using the top equation, we've got the label at number one, and times that by six, we then get six X plus six Y equals six. If we call that equation three, the 31 X plus six Y equals 24 is equation two. We can now go through our process. We can subtract those equations, eliminate the Y's. We end up with 25 X equals 18. Divided by 25 gives us that X equals 18 over 25. Using our first equation, we know that y equals one minus x, therefore y must equal seven over 25. Here's the Mark's Scheme Examiner's report. Very few students scored well in part one. Not many students got the correct equation. Some just wrote x plus y plus 24. But the students who did write the correct equation were able to solve it. So here's some tips for teaching this topic. Students should practice formula solving equations in one variable and also forming the simultaneous equations in two variables. They must practice solving simultaneous equations in two variables. If students struggle to solve simultaneous equations in two variables, they could use some objects or methods to help solve these equations. Thank you for listening to this video. I hope you found it useful.